Needle. Hey everybody, welcome back to Trail 89 Adventures. I'm Todd. I've got some pretty cool stuff for you today. I'm at the Aquafria National Monument. I'm also rolling down Bloody Basin Road to Sheep's Bridge. So come along with me today and check it out. Well, this trail so far has been relatively graded dirt road, so nothing spectacular, but um, I'm making a turn here on trail 9023. It's a short trail, maybe two miles, and it's supposed to take us to some Pueblo La Plata ruins. We're gonna go check that out. So we're taking a short little hike here to Pueblo de La Plata. This is supposed to be one of the largest sites here on the Aquafria National Monument. So we're gonna go check it out, see what we can find out here. But you can see here out in the distance, that mountain range, I-17 runs right in front of that mountain range and the Sunset Point rest area that a lot of people are familiar with goes right through there. So we're not that far off of the highway, really. This structure had they said from about 80 to 100 rooms sitting on top of this mesa right above the Silver Creek, which would have been the water source. But it's amazing that this is this rock structure is just still here and relatively intact. And reading the stuff at the beginning of the trailhead, it said it has not been excavated. And there's pottery shards all over. You gotta take a little bit of a hike to get over here. Maybe a half a mile or so. You can see the Jeep way back over there. But there's a sign-in log you can sign in on. There's a little information sheet in the kiosk. And uh, I think we're gonna head back and keep on heading down the trail because we got a lot of miles to cover here today but this is a pretty neat place well that was a pretty cool little excursion it was only two miles off of bloody basin road to get out to those ruins kind of neat to see that and read the history about it and kind of think back on what happened on that land 500 800 years ago and just kind of envision what life would have been back then. It's just kind of neat to, you know, be out there in the desert and ponder that a little bit. Must have been pretty rough, I would think. But anyway, neat to see that. We're gonna continue heading down the trail. So I just crossed into the Tonto National Forest and now I'm on trail 269 and because these uh, trails run across different land ownership we had uh, Aquafria National Monument was what I started in and now I'm in Tonto National Forest. The trail numbers change a little bit even though it's the same road but I think this is going to start to get a little bit more aggressive as we get into the mountains here after looking at some of the trail reviews and things that I've read. Uh, we should expect to see some better scenery uh, as we get closer to Sheep's Bridge. Wow. <laughs> I saw a sign back there that said, Road with changes next six miles. So I knew there was a change coming, I just didn't know what it was. And when I came up that hill and turned the corner, and you see this, 
and that's just pretty cool. The drop off here is really steep, as you can tell. And the road definitely has gotten a little bit of rough. That's why I stopped here to do this video. I'm not doing that while I'm driving, but. So I just wanted to stop for a moment and just go back out and look at those switchbacks I just came down. And they were right up here and they kind of switched back down around this way. Tough to see from here. The road was, was pretty good, but the drop-offs on the side were, they were pretty high drop-offs. Great views out here of different peaks. So this is uh, Turret Peak right out here. I'm going to pan over to the east and way out there in the distance you can see four peaks uh, bull mountain is out there as well so pretty good views from here i mean it feels like i'm in the middle of nowhere you can't even really comprehend how vast this area is and this is all Tonto National Forest that I'm in right now. Wildflowers are still blooming. I've seen pink ones, yellow ones, red ones from the super bloom that we had this year. All right, enough of me talking. Let's get heading back down the trail. You know, you never know what you're going to see out here. Just driving along, crossed over a wash right there, and out the window is this pipe, a suspended pipe. Now, I don't know what it is, if there's a well, or if it goes to some kind of cattle pond, maybe a mine, who knows. But this stuff's just out here everywhere, and it's been out here forever, and then it goes under the ground, and there you go, you don't see it again. But just interesting stuff. All right, I made it down to the intersection of Bloody Basin Road and Seven Springs Road. Uh, some people call it Cave Creek Road. It takes you to the Seven Springs Recreation Area, and that is down that way. So I think I might actually, when I head back, I think I might go down that way just to check out that road, as I haven't been down there before. So I think the sign here said there's about 12 more miles to get to the Verde River. And that's what we're gonna go do. So really easy trail up to this point, just a rough, rocky dirt road, um, nothing spectacular. Some good scenery, but 
but you have to be okay with cliffs and driving on those uh the roads with the with the edges on them because going down those switchbacks that was pretty pretty steep edges there but other than that the road is pretty easy but i think it gets more difficult closer down to the river but we're gonna go find out Well, like I said, there's always interesting stuff out in the desert. Let's go check this out. This thing has been here for a while. Because it is been used for quite a bit of target practice. Oh, it smokes. Surprised it hasn't been lit on fire yet. Well, it looks like they took the airbag and the spare out of it. How you doing? Yeah. Well, I think I have a couple miles to go. And it is, this trail has turned into from a uh, graded dirt road to just a rock trail. It's super rocky. Um, I passed a little while ago some folks in a Subaru Outback that were coming the other direction and I asked them, I said, hey is there many people down at the at the bridge and, and they said we never got that far. That they had to turn around because they didn't want to get get stuck on some of these rocks. Uh, but I just passed two other people in some full-size pickups that were uh, outfitted as full overland gear so they were uh, they were coming up the trails I didn't get to talk to them but I did pass them but a uh, little bit more and we will be at the sheep's bridge well there's another vehicle this one's down there in that ravine. Looks like it fell off the road, rolled. Yeah, it's definitely been there for, for a little bit. I 
to uh, pull over there because there was uh, some folks in a Tacoma coming up the switchbacks and they've got the right of way so I wanted to give them some room but they said I've got 3.7 more miles to get to Sheep's Bridge and they were doing an in and out trip just like I am today so that's pretty cool it's always neat to see other folks you know out on the trails 3.7 more to go Alright, here is the first glimpse I've seen of the river. And you can see right down there is Sheep's Bridge. So we're gonna head down there in a few minutes, but wanted to stop here and take in this view. This is incredible. You can hear the water running from up here. The river's running super high right now just because of all the flood water up north. Hey, made it down to Sheep's Bridge. This is pretty cool. The river is flowing strong. Let's go take a look. Well, here's the other end of the bridge and you can see up here where those wires are connected into the rock face there. Those are some thick cables. This is not the original bridge actually. This was rebuilt by the Forest Service. You can see over here to the left, the concrete uh, pier, that was from the original bridge. I don't know if you can hear it because of the wind, but there's some rapids over here and the water is super loud coming down those little rapids here. And I haven't been out here before. I've only seen videos and pictures, but I have seen, you know, water crossings here of Jeeps going across there. But it looks really deep right now. There's no way that uh, I think anybody's crossing that. So the original bridge was built in 1943, and that's what this structure is here. This is part of the original bridge, wood and concrete. And they built this so they could get sheep across the Verde River. And if you look at the plaque here, you can actually see Sheep crossing the bridge. And then the picture that was on the other plaque down there, this whole part here showed it was all sand and beach. So you can tell the water level is really high right now. All right, gang, it took us a while to get down here, so. All right, I just climbed the trail out from the river and it's about six and three quarters miles to kind of this saddle area. And you're gonna climb about 1300 feet in elevation. So when you look here, down to the river, you can see the, the road going all the way down, 1326 feet in elevation down to the river. 
So pretty good little climb coming out of there. I am back to the intersection of Bloody Basin Road and Cave Creek Road, Seven Springs. Uh, I'm actually gonna head that way on Trail 24, which is Seven Springs Road, AKA Cave Creek, and uh, head that way. But I'll tell you the last 11 miles going down to the Verde River, boy, that is super rough. So if you're coming off of I-17, the first, you know, 20 miles or so, you're like, hey, this is just a, a dirt road. I can roll this pretty good. When you get to the last 11, you better be prepared to slow down. But uh, when you get to Sheep's Bridge, it's all worth it. Hey, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video going down to Sheep's Bridge. Take care.